Greetings. Welcome to my studio in downtown Carmel. And we will be reading the first chapter of the teachings of Yoga. I hope you enjoy it. Chapter 1 Meeting Yama, Helping the Earth, Temptation I had a dream. I dreamt I was on a stairway, and below me stood a woman, a woman in rags, holding in her arms the rotting head of a girl. She cried, My child, my child. In horror the stench that filled my nostrils, I turned and fled upstairs. She followed. Through the doors of the finest restaurant I ran. She comes, she comes, I warned the hall full of diners. Yet no one heard my shout above the din of cutlery and the rustling of conversation. Past the tables I fled, and as I began climbing the attic stairs, the woman entered, and the din stopped, and the silence reigned a moment before the screams of recognition prevailed and panic became the dessert of the diners, and only half-eaten dinners remained in the hall. Into the attic I escaped, closing the door behind, hoping, praying, that the doorknob would not turn. Then the stench slipped under the door, and the knob began to move. Into her sunken eyes I gazed. With nowhere to run, I surrendered and sat down, I closed my eyes and closed my nose and silenced my breath. I felt a tap on my shoulder. Come and drink with me, I heard somewhere in the distance of my mind. I opened my eyes and numbly followed her. We descended to the empty bar downstairs and she began making us drinks like some macabre bartender. And though the rotting stench of the head made me gag, I accepted her drink and took a respectful sip. She smiled and said, I am pleased with you, for you no longer attempted to flee and have accepted my drink. Nowhere could I run, so I did nothing but the inevitable. I no longer had the choice of fleeing, I replied. Ah, the same as for the others although they constantly create circumstances to provide the illusion of escape. Ask me a boon, and it is yours, she said. Very well, tell me who you are. She smiled. I am the plan of everyone and every remembrance. I am every exhalation. I am every burst of anger and every grievance held. I am the smile and promise of your career politicians and the ambition of every man. I am the farewell of every lover and the meeting of another too. I am the screams of war and the riots for peace. I am the passing by of every beggar's hand and the opening of a savings account. I am the mouthful of every delicacy and every grumbling belly unanswered. I am the spewing of every vehicle and the soiling of every water. I am every footprint on the shore and every wave. I am in every kiss and in every copulation. I am in every museum and in every poet's dream of immortality. I am in every rifle barrel and on the edge of every knife. I am in every word of gossip and in every thought of judgment. I am every lie. I am in every candle flame and in every cloud and in every spring. I am in the bloom of every flower. I am in the shadows after every sunrise and in the center of every star. I am the pointing of God's finger. I am time. My name is Yama. I am death. Yama, I caught my breath. It has come to this, I now face death, I said to myself. I have felt both fear and awe. She smiled and said, Because you sought to know about another and were willing to listen, unlike the multitude too busy thinking of only themselves, I will give you another boon. 
I saluted with folded hands to the one who is named Yama. Please, revered one, you who draw near with every blink of one's eye, tell me of your child and why you weep. My child, throughout these thousands of darkened years, in the age called Kali, has been trampled by ignorant, hard-hearted men. They have enslaved her and have worked her lifeless, their hearts empty of gratitude. By the fruits of their greed they have defecated upon her, and by their lust for power have drowned her in their own blood. And throughout this torment my daughter has given her all, never holding back. My child is the earth itself. Suddenly the rotting head Yama held transformed into a miniature blue-jeweled sphere of the earth. Then the earth vanished, and with it the stench disappeared. Because you asked about my child who is dear to me, and asked not to remove the stench for your own sake, ask of me another favor. Please, you who lead every youth onward, Tell me how I may help your child, I asked, bowing once more. Very well, I will tell you. She paused for a moment. Be aware. That's right. Be aware of all that you do, all that you see, feel, taste, smell, and hear. See the shadows and how they stretch from stone to stone upon the path you walk. Hear the birds twitter amidst the hum of silence. Feel the warmth of the sun shining on your back, and then the coolness of the passing of a cloud. Taste every morsel of food, savoring every spice, and taste the rain the same. Breathe in the smell of the barnyard with the same smile as you would sniffing jasmine. I said, Dear Yama, you have been since the first movement of time. Who knows the time span of all things? I do not understand how this helps your child. Please elaborate. Elaborate. By being aware, you become awake. By being awake, you will not trample ignorantly upon the earth in your sleep. And by being awake, you will become simple, for no longer will you have a myriad dreams to fulfill. Thank you. I understand more clearly. Yet please explain that since you lead all things to discretion, destruction, why the need to help the earth? It is doomed to perish. Death replied, Many a fool have thought thus, and have lived their lives for the moment, living to satisfy only their desires. Let me explain. The earth is none other than your mother, Every need you have while expressing through a physical human body, a rare opportunity that countless souls desire to have, is given by her. And even as quickly, even as I quickly lead your earthly parents away, still every parent needs to be given gratitude. With every breath should rise gratitude, with every morsel of food, every whisper of the wind, every step, every touch of another creature, every sigh, every stab of pain, every beat of your heart, every laugh, every smile of a child, every bottle of wine to accompany a drunkard home. With all these and everything that comes, gratitude needs to meet them. This brings honor to my child and thus pleases me. And when I smile, I do not work so hard. Peering intently into the smiling face of Yom, I said, Wait a minute. What you have just taught me sounds like you are asking all to be worshipping life. If you are death, how does worshipping life please you? I am confused. Are you truly death? Yom smiled. I am pleased with your questions. I am indeed death, and I am life. I see no difference. In the darkest of winter, or in the middle of the greatest conflagration, life lies hidden. And in the blooming of spring and in every flowing river I wait. I am the death of every youth, while life is the birth of every adult. We are two faces of the same coin. 
In a flash the woman in rags was no more, and in her stead stood a majestic-looking man, dressed as a king with a mighty sword by his side. Ask of me anything, this kingly figure said in a very serious tone. You can rule over the world, a benign king even, looking after all his people. I can make you the richest man in the world, or the most intelligent. You can have any woman you want, or women for that matter, and be adept at pleasing them all. I can make you famous, your name adored even in your own lifetime, and for all ages to come in whatever field you choose. I shook my head. You can live as long as you like. Supernatural powers I give you. You may visit the three worlds. You may read every man's mind and be impervious to curses. With a thought you may create anything or destroy whatever you will. You may have a celestial maiden every night upon a bed of clouds with angels serenading you. You may fly or walk through walls or upon the water. You may change shape at will, be giant or small, or be in any shape you want. You may have the power of invisibility. Again I shook my head. I will make you a god, even the king of gods. Falling down on my knees, I touched Yama's feet. Revered sir, with many forms, you who are king of time and who even lead the gods to destruction. I know you offer Nichikitas thousands of years ago such things, and he refused. He desired true knowledge. He desired to know your mystery and to escape your touch. Today you still exist, and tomorrow in the ages to come, you await humanity's arrival. Birth to death and back again. This wheel is tiresome, and all beings are crushed by it. I too want to be taught by you your mystery, and to know how one can escape your clutches. Please answer my questions truthfully, and clearly is what I ask. Then drink up, and we will go, he said, as he helped me to my feet. I drank it all, and the drink's sweetness warmed my whole being. What is this that I have drunk? Your drunken wisdom, for it is only the wise who face death.